तो यस हाय गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन दिस इज विशाल लंकपाली फ्रॉम प्रॉस्पेल इंडिया आई लाइक टू एक्सटेंड अ बेग थैंक यू टू एवरी वन प्रेजेंट हियर टूडे सो जस्ट टू गिव यू अ स्मॉल आइडिया अबाउट अस सो प्रॉस्पेल इज अ करियर्स एंड एजुकेशन टेक्नोलॉजी कंपनी दैट हेल्प स्टूडेंट्स एंड अर्ली जॉब सीकर्स टू लॉन्च देर इनक्रेडिबल करियर्स एक्चुअली सो वी वर्क विद लॉर्ड ऑफ यूनिवर्सिटीज स्टूडेंट सोसाइटीज एंड कॉलेज इंडस्ट्री एसोसिएशन एज वेल uh and government in some cases to connect early stage uh, career seekers with job uh, course opportunities and since the launching our first product in 2015 we have grown out to be uh, used by over 2 million students annually so this is a free event that we are organizing to help students graduates and career shifters or uh, or to advance in their careers actually uh, to keep yourself in the loop uh, make sure you sign up on prospel i see that we already have a number of participants here uh if you can please say hi on the chat box and mention where are you from so i believe that we have attendees from all over the globe right now so to everyone welcome to our panel session for the startup virtual career fair 2021 uh for this session we will be taking uh, we will be uh, sorry talking about the uh, tips and tricks for you guys Uh, to the audience, uh, largely to make it uh, through into the industry. Uh, so take out your pens before you miss out anything. And uh, before our speaker introduction, I would like to ask everyone if you have any questions that you'd like to ask, uh, you can type them in the chat room, and we'll uh, try to answer as many as possible after our speaker session is done. So you can just park your questions uh, in the chat box in the Q and A session. And also, uh, here's how our program flow uh, would be like. so first we'll be the welcome and panel session which will be total of 15 minutes the initial part of it would be the panel discussion followed by q&a directed to the panelists uh there forward being uh, the speaking slot uh, of uh, total 20 minutes the first 15 minutes will be exclusive uh, for an employer and the second one would uh, the remaining 5 minutes would be dedicated to the q&a directed to that employer and same goes for the second speaking slot as well and then in closing we'll wrap up the session all right great to see the great response in the chat box that i see over here so really uh, pumped up to be helpful to you guys so um basically we'll uh, we we'll, we'll have a quick panel session right now so uh, just to uh, uh, what we'll be doing is uh, we will be asking a set of questions which i feel uh is totally from uh, the perspective of graduates of how would like, they like to start the career with uh, in this particular organization or in this particular sector of uh, industry right so uh, to begin with uh, we'll go say uh, serially i'll will I, i'll begin with uh, grace so could you just introduce yourself and describe what your organization does thank you vishal Hi everyone. So my name is Grace. I am basically from the company called Pulse ID. We are basically a small technology startup. Okay, Hong Kong based and currently operating in um, Singapore, Malaysia, Philippines, and India as well. Okay. So what we do is basically we are kept like operating an open commerce platform that whereby it bring. businesses like merchants and the price businesses payment networks financial institutions and consumer together so we enable the kind of like um merchant offer sourcing distribution and redemption to be happen so which connects like people like for example from bank payment network like fintech even crypto as well together so that is the kind of thing that we do yeah they to know would love to hear from you as well rahendra about your company and what it is into hi fishal thank you very much uh, hello all i'm rahendra i'm uh, from the people team of payvas uh, basically payvas is our b2b platform focused on payment points and financial services the, the unbanked society so basically we have uh, provided agents uh, which is the small and medium business to grow their business and uh, the application provides from the financial services as well like uh, fund transfer payments and etc also we have group site that by now uh, uh, developing uh, our area to singapore vietnam taiwan and also malaysia thank you fishal need to know naman could you introduce yourself and uh, the company and what is it into 
Yeah, sure. Hey, everyone. Uh, I'm, I'm Naman. I work in product at a company called Safety Wing. Uh, we uh, are basically building a global uh, social safety net for remote workers and uh, digital nomads globally. So what that means is essentially we're, uh, we're trying to build out healthcare uh, insurance and, and financial security products um, at a global scale um, that, that kind of work on a cross-border level. Uh, and we started off in 2018. Um, we're still based in San Francisco, but a fully decentralized team uh, that's based uh, all over the globe. It's it's great to be here. Thanks, Michelle. Great. And we have Dio. So could you just uh, tell us about yourself and the company? What is it into? Uh, hey, thank you, Michelle. I'm so possible to introduce um, to invite Zenrooms here. Uh, my name is Dio, and I'm the HR manager for Zenrooms in Indonesia. So um, Zenroom is actually a hospitality solutions uh, startup, tech startups. Uh, we our clients are um, all kinds of accommodations, and we're selling software. So we're actually selling the back end system of the hotel, uh, basically to help them to uh, get the technology solutions to help them on operational efficiency and also how they can, you know, like run their property in their city. Uh, so our portfolio is software services and we are assisting in five countries, uh, which we are assisting in Indonesia, Malaysia, Thailand, Philippines, Singapore and Vietnam. So it's like six countries, sorry. And our people are from all over the world. So for everyone here, you have the same chances to join the team uh, because yeah, our team are consisting of uh, like many international people as well. Thank you. Thanks, Zatan. Good to know. Apeksha, keen to hear from you as well. Hi, thanks, Michelle. And hello, fellow panelists and everyone who's here. So my name is Apeksha. I'm the group HR manager for NEO. Um, and I think I'm the only company here that's based in India and everyone's in India, but I'm an American citizen. So you can join us even if you're not from India. Um, so NEO is uh, India's leading fintech and we're a pioneer in the digital banking space. If you've heard of NEO banking, we're sort of one of the big players in the neo-banking movement in India, even though it's not technically a thing yet. Um, and we have presences all over India and Bangalore, Delhi and Mumbai. Um, and essentially we build digital banking solutions in partnership with banks all over India to help people uh, save, spend, travel, invest um, all through a really seamless digital platform. So I'm uh, really excited to be here and I'm excited to hear what other people have to say. Thank you. Thanks, Apiksha. And then we have Chin. Hi everyone. Yeah, it's so good to meet all of you here. Uh, thank you, Michelle, and thank you, Possible, for inviting. Um, so my name is actually Chin Ai. Um, very ah. easy to remember. Um, so uh, I'm Chin Ai, and I'm from TEDB. So TEDB, uh, we do we are a fintech company based in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Um, and what we do is we provide alternative financing to SMEs, so small medium enterprises uh, in Malaysia as well as Southeast Asia. Um, and we also do that via uh, P2P investments as well. Um, so, so we are a multiple thronged, uh, com uh, pronged company, so, um, but mainly FinTech uh, startup as well. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Uh, just for the benefit of everyone uh, like, you know, uh, present in the session right now, so our panelists here are some of the top professionals in the industry, and they are also from top startup companies in the country. So you'll be getting a lot of information from them and uh, you can utilize them to actually get to know what is it like uh, to uh, like, you know, an insight uh, from them actually uh, for all your questions out there. And uh, to articulate it better, I can give the floor to our pan panelists to, uh, uh, I, uh, they have already introduced themselves. So we'll move on to the set of questions, which normally uh, I think most of y'all would want to uh, like, you know, be answered uh, of, but then apart from that, uh, in case you have any questions, do feel free to paste them in the uh, Q&A session uh, so that our panelists can answer them, um, like, you know, uh, although at the last, but we'll try to ma answer uh, maximum of them for sure. So, yes. Uh, yeah, moving on. Uh, we, what, what is the most important piece of advice that you'd give to students aspiring to work for a startup company? So I'll start with uh, Rayendra. Would you like to give an insight on that? Sure, sure. So uh, uh, to start up, yeah. So basically, I think there's the there's two important things that uh, should be have by everyone that want to join the startup. It is the eager to learn and try new things because I think uh, majorly startup have different kind of pace 
and then the, like like others than professional uh, industry. So in PayFast, like we have uh, like monthly or be monthly change of strategies because the uh, economic also the, the the condition of the covid so makes our management have to improve a lot so mm -hmm. yeah i think the 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 sec the two things that uh, i think have to be uh, have to own by the new fresh graduate is uh, eager to learn so whether you're in line with your uh, studies or not they get to learn new things and try it. So yeah, I think that's it on, on my end, Vishal. Nice. Naman, your thoughts on that? Sure, I, I, I second a lot of what Rahinder just said, but I think in addition to that, I, I'd like to, to add that um, being comfortable making mistakes, um, almost um, kind of having that mindset that uh, of, of doing something uh, in, in startups, especially compared to bigger companies, you learn a lot by doing. Uh, and making mistakes and, and generally the environment is very conducive to and, and accepting of that um, and so just kind of mentally preparing to be able to just learn from your mistakes and iterating the next time and that's honestly the best way I've seen people operate so uh, yeah I, I think that's one of the biggest pieces of feedback I'd have. Okay. Dio, love to hear your thoughts as well. Okay, so yeah, I think like, I have to agree with uh, the previous speakers, you know, like all of those, uh, you know, mentality that we have to have in startups, because I've been working in a big companies as well, NGO as well, but I think startups readable is more suitable with me because of the flexibility that I can have in terms of how I want to develop the business or like how I want to grow as uh, someone. So if you like challenges, if you like things who are uncertain and wants to be the part of the solutions, I think startup is going to be like a good platform for you to learn. So yeah, the flexibility, learn from your mistake, um, and also like uh, have the growth mindset is the feedback that I can give if you want to start your career in startup. Amazing. A picture keen to your, uh, hear from you as well. Yeah, so I think they've really covered the mindset side of things really, really well. So I want to kind of provide another angle. Um, something that I recommend a lot of applicants to do is if you have the ability to become a customer, for a segment or a startup that you really like do it. So like we're a B2C fintech company. So when our applicants come in saying, I've been using your app for a few months and they can give me really direct concrete feedback um, and they're thinking critically about those things from the get-go, that demonstrates to me that you have very genuine interest. And I think if you can get through that, that also shows yourself that you have very genuine interest. And there's a lot of different things you could be doing. So since you know you have this amazing piece of technology in your hand and in front of you, take advantage of it and really, you know, give yourself the autonomy to be a critic for the product that you want to be a part of. Amazing. Janai, would love to hear from you. Yeah, I think I, I would agree with everyone who have just shared, um, and especially a picture's um, sort of uh, input, right? Um, really putting yourself in the shoes of potential customers and like customers um, really sets you apart from the other sort of applicants, right? Because when you show us that you've, critically thought about, hey, what does it, what does it mean uh, to be a client, to be a customer? And what would it take for our startup to sort of, you know, be the rest of the competition and, and really serve the needs of our customers? If you've, if you've put enough time to think about that and to, and to be able to articulate that uh, to us, um, yeah, we, we want you like immediately kind of thing. Amazing. Moving on to the next one, uh, like I, I, I resonate with this uh, question actually, uh, because this is what I was thinking previously when I was searching for, uh, say, like, you know, my first start in the, like, you know, in the professional uh, sector. So what is your organization looking for in an application typically? Like what do students need to know or need to show to progress to the next round? So starting with you, Rahindra again. Okay, so basically, uh, I think the main ideas of the PayFast is we have we have to have the good communication skills. So basically, organization-wise, on the CVs, uh, experience as well will be a nice things. But I think uh, I think by now we're not selecting. Uh, so we are really like interviewing all the all the internship. So uh, basically, we we just want to know uh, what they dream of, but how I mean like how the eagerness to grow, how they think that the PayFast is, and then how they communicate. I think those 
I think I think those three are really really relevant with with our uh, ideas or values. So basically, we don't like you can put anything on the, on the CVs, right? Because uh, but then I think uh, we I think all the ways gonna gonna meet in, in our interview session. So uh, apparently, we don't choose that much. Uh, but then we we like almost like every internship we try to call them and try try to know. So uh, yeah, I think. I think the communication skill it will be the most important things for us by now. Yeah. Number. Thank yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Raina. Number. Your thoughts? Sure. So, <clears throat> going back to something that was mentioned, I think by Dio in the previous point, the um, just looking at growth mindset and willingness to learn and kind of accept feedback, uh, both knowing kind of your strengths and spikes and weaknesses, I think is very important to us, um, and then. Um, I, I would almost say that the second one equally important is being able to kind of take initiative. So, for example, if someone was given a task instead of waiting around for instructions, coming up with like a preliminary project plan, even if that's wrong, and then presenting that. So I, I think, uh, yeah, I, I would say those two are probably the most important for us. Need to know. Dio? You okay. Um, just to answer, I can say that um, someone who is also a world citizen, um, I think I agree with the previous speaker as well that because like, you know, like we are a startup company who is like always growing. Um, so in terms of the mindset and also the communication skill are very important, but also since the company, uh, I mean, like since Zenrooms is also existing in many countries and we are pretty much very centralized. So being a world citizen is, al is also important because we want you to also know that you're working with people, not only from your country, but also from all over the world. So to have the mindset of a, World citizen and also share the same value as the company is the ones that we're looking for because experience and also skill are something that we can build together but when it comes to mindset it comes from your you know from yourself so i think that's the thing from our side amazing apeksha your thoughts please yeah, so again, everyone has said really great things that I agree with. It's definitely growth mindset, initiative communication. Um, I think on top of that, I mean, ideally, we would want someone with really relevant experience, but I know we're talking to a lot of fresh graduates. So I think if you can take your educational experiences at whatever university you're at and really show how they could directly apply to your industry or your potential role, um, that's really, really great, um, especially because that shows us you're a great communicator and also shows us that you're more prepared for the role. Um, and I think in addition to that, like we're like fintech, for instance, is a very, very quickly evolving industry. So we need to see agility and adaptability and flexibility and more than anything, resilience. Like there's going to be a lot of frustration along the way, not just within the company, but within the industry. So we really need people who can kind of maintain that sort of um, like no months of growth mindset headspace and approach everything with an air of, uh, of positivity um, and also, you know, innovation. So that's really important for us. Reese, your thoughts, please. For us, basically, communication is still the key for fresh graduates, yeah, because they're going to work with people with, like, different countries, right? So, and on top of that, um, um, we we tend to, like, prefer to have candidates that they sort of, like, have a, a, a sort of a direction in terms of what they wanted to do, yeah? So, not, not like they know exactly, but have a, a sense of direction, yeah? Because if they are not really sure about what they want to do in, in as a direction, then it will be probably hard for us to really train that person up, right? And of course, um, we are looking for, um, like in general, fresh graduates that is hungry for success and wanted to make an impact um, based on the things that we roll out in the market, for example. And lastly, it will be by like innovation and creativity as well. So that's a few things that we are looking at for a fresh, I mean, from a fresh graduate. Yeah. Amazing. Jinai, your thoughts, please? Yeah, I definitely agree with uh, previous speakers as well. Um, I think definitely um, knowing your why. So, so why do you want to uh, apply to our company? And then why do you want to apply to a startup? Why do you want to apply to a fintech, right? So, so when you know your why, even if let's say, so I'm, I'm from the people department and I studied something that's totally um, quote unquote irrelevant, right? So I studied uh, PPE, political science, philosophy and economics. And currently I'm working in a fintech as in their people department. So, um, but, but I think for me, my why is I want to know about people's stories. I want to 
know about people's strengths and and help them hone their strengths and be be a good coach right and and for that um my company cat bay happens to really appreciate that and that's why i got hired right so i think when when i'm looking for um a person a, a candidate um so even as a fresh grad you know if you can know your why if you can know your strengths and if you know where you want to really head towards and and sort of learn in what are the skill sets that you want to learn um and what are the skill sets that you can bring to a company um i think when you can sell me your why um you can yeah like come and work with us very well put yeah good great to know uh we have some questions rolling in so excited to uh, answer those at the end of the session so uh yeah moving on further uh, so for the students who land a job with you uh what advice would you give to help them survive and thrive in the first year and what are the things that they shouldn't do so um uh, coming back to you again rajendra so what you should do yeah okay so it's uh it's a simple things the one is try to adapt because as as our name is fast we're really moving that fast so uh adapt with the new things adapt with your uh second family uh, on 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 the fast family uh i think there's the two best uh, advice that i can share because like uh, startup is is really different industry and uh, i think i think and 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 in my company we we only like have a lot of changes and you have to adapt with it so yeah i think i think uh, adapt with the new family and adapt with the changes is the most best advice that, that i can share with uh, what don't as i mean like don't really like so fast to uh what's called it uh fast to surrender or fast to give up because the changes makes you even better so i think uh there's a lot of changes in in our industry so please if you have uh, one or two obstacles bear with it and try to be uh to solve the the issues then you can grow but if you like just like have one or two issues then you give up and then you you resign or something i think uh that's going to be a uh, uh don't that i can share with thank you for yourself yeah. naman your thoughts please sure i i think um so one thing i found um uh, at safety wing and, and generally at remote startups is that um where it's hard to connect with your colleagues early on and i think it it's very important especially in the early days to figure out who you'd be working very closely with and setting setting up one on ones to kind of get to know them so that's kind of practically i think one thing i would do um just with any uh, honestly it works with both non remote and remote companies i think that works very well um and then two i would say um almost take it easy on yourself and give yourself some slack in the beginning to learn and get up to speed before you start producing because a lot of times we just put pressure on ourselves uh when joining even like a new job uh changing jobs or or especially for first graduates to kind of over um produce and no one at work is uh, the likelihood is no one at work is expecting you to produce from day one they're kind of expecting you to get up to speed so you can figure out how best you can add value so i, I would just cut yourself some Uh, slack and take it easy on yourself. <laughs> Very well put, Dio. Your thoughts, please. Yes, um, I think I have to agree. Um, if your if this is your first time full time job, um, so we're not gonna ask you to produce something, or we're not gonna ask you to right away like do the sales, or probably doing the call. So of course, um, to have. Uh, to get to know more about the role is very necessary by setting expectations with your team leader or your peers in other side try to also understand about like what uh, what how should i self regulate myself especially if your company is like in hybrid working or like you have to do working from home try to talk to your team leader and also to your uh, peers how can i self regulate myself if you know that probably we're not you know like uh physically in the office so self regulations is very important um and then try to get to know get, try to dig deeper about uh the role itself and yeah and after that i think you are ready to get some trainings and then of course you're going to get or like you you need to produce by yourself so yeah <laughs> thanks to dan for asking uh, answering that actually uh, apeksha your thoughts please 
Yeah, so like Chennai, I'm also from a non-traditional background, quote unquote. I'm, I made my way to human resources from biology and English. So I think something that uh, I kind of suffer from, and I know a lot of people suffer from, is like imposter syndrome. And I keep reminding people who have joined the company, like you were hired for a reason, try to like stick to, you know, that reason and really bring your best self to the table. And if you're trying to grow in a company, you need to say yes a lot, even when it feels a little uncomfortable but also draw boundaries. So I think just really kind of center yourself and approach every day, like keeping your, your best self in mind, um, but also speak up a lot. Um, when you're like a small agile company, you need a lot of voices at the table and you might feel like your voice is not valid sometimes, but if you are a possible customer, that means that your opinion is probably shared by someone else in the world. So I would say, say yes, speak up and really pay attention to your customers, um, stay curious and uh, stay positive, yeah. Very well put. Grace, your thoughts, please. Uh, for me, I think um, fresh grads shouldn't be afraid to ask and challenge. Yeah. So if they have good ideas, they should like brave enough to set it out. Yeah. And um, also if they, I mean, because we are on hybrid as well. So reach out whenever they need support because we, we won't be having like colleagues that sitting beside that person to really know like whether this person is good or not good right for example so um um like be brave to reach out as well yeah so i think that's 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 from me yeah thanks Janai, your thoughts be proactive um schedule one-on-ones with your supervisor um find out what they're looking for um ask that brave and crazy question of why did you hire me you know what did you see in me that you that made you hire me um and and really in that sense live up to that right so um and and get the support get the guidance you need um don't be afraid to to push back uh when you feel like you know it's something that you don't know or ask for where they, you can get like the relevant support um so i think i think those are skills that you would need um in your first 12 months Amazing. And moving on to the next one, this is a very important question, actually. So uh, final word in one sentence, why should students apply to your organization? Like what makes your company unique? What would be that key uh, differentiating factor? Over to you, Sahindra. Okay, so basically, I think the unique one is we have a fast belief. So we don't treat our team like uh, differentiate with, with, the, with the other. So basically, we have we, we, we appreciate all the team as a second family. The fast family is uh, like we have diversity, we have all the differences, but I think when it comes to, to work, when it comes to the very fast, it's one fast family. I think those things that make us different from the others. I think that's it from my end. It's all. Yes, that, that's clear. <laughs> Naman, your thoughts, please. Yeah, I think we have a pretty, uh, we have a really diverse team uh, that I've really enjoyed working with. And I, I mean, to give you an idea, we have maybe 70 plus people that uh, work from 40, 45 countries or so. Um, and uh, so we're trying, we're trying to build a global solution. And that's why I think uh, we are kind of our own customers. And, and uh, that's something that I uh, really appreciate working here. Amazing. Dio, over to you. Okay, so yeah, um, so for all of you who is aspired to work in a multicultural work environment, I think you should apply. You will work closely with many coworkers, clients, and vendors from different countries from all over the world as well. As we demonstrate diversity and inclusion, so no need to worry. We basically only see you from the experiences that you have. Uh, and of course, um, you will be mentored by people who are experienced in the industry, on the road. And of course, uh, with all of these reasons, it will help you to develop your work ethics and of course, your global business mindset. So yeah, thank you. Join Zen. Ah, amazing. Apiksha, your thoughts? Yeah, um, if you spend money and you have an opinion about money, then you are a viable employee slash customer for us. Um, and most of our ideas come from, uh, you know, employee ideas. We have hackathons, we have all sorts of events just to get employees' brains literally um, turning as much as possible. So we're looking for our next light bulb moment. If anything has ever frustrated you in the realm of fintech and you really like problem solving and you want to have your ideas out into the world, please come join us. We would absolutely love to have you. Amazing. Grace? 
we generally invest a lot in developing our own people. Yeah. So where, where we actually provide them growth opportunities, we eventually can add value to their own uh, individual profile or even make their resume better in a sense, that kind of exposure. So um, I would say if you're hungry for knowledge and growth opportunities, then, then we want you. Yeah. Amazing. Good night. If you are someone who is excited to learn, um, and if you're someone who, you know, um, three months can feel like you've been here for like three years, um, come and join Cat Bay. Uh, we love people who love learning, who love pushing themselves, um, and who love innovation. So come and join Cat Bay. Amazing. Thank you. Thank you. So I can see a lot of questions flowing in, and I would like to remind everyone that if you want to know about uh, PayFast, Safety Wings, Zen Rooms, Neo Solutions, Pitch In, and Pulse ID as well, uh, and Cap Bay, of course. Uh, you can check out their profile uh, in the chat box. Uh, it's being mentioned. Uh, maybe you can look, uh, have a look at uh, their profile and their opening, uh, the positions that are uh, out there available for you to apply. Maybe like you know, it can be your best. Uh, uh, you can be the best fit for that role. So uh, we'll take some time to uh, answer some a few questions. So uh, yes, the first question is, uh, do you offer training or mentorship to help applicants succeed in your company? Um, not sure who, who, to whom it is directed to, but anyone uh, like feel free to answer that. Or maybe yes. simple yes or no, uh, <laughs> Rahendra. Oh, okay, so, so basically development is, is really in our uh, phase. Basically, uh, I think, we already have a people development, uh, organization development as well. So yeah, training courses and everything will be on our top of mind. And then basically in our in our end, uh, we already have like investment day and then English day. So people can like uh, increase the capability in English or on investing some money for, for, for the future. So yeah, so again, development is a, is a must in, in our company. So yeah, I think that's it. So, yeah. Naman? Yeah, we, we have a, I would say we have, we have a more unstructured um, kind of uh, process for this. So we have a pretty sizable learning budget um, that people can spend on coaches, um, books, uh, courses, anything like that. And we kind of all share, uh, we have like a common Slack group where we all share what we found very useful so other people can see what they've done. Uh, but it's very flexible and kind of what people use it on. Um, and uh, other than that, I think when people are onboarded, they're assigned like a mentor and uh, kind of more informally coached through the process. Yes, um, I think from Zenroom as well. So we kind of have the same like unstructured uh, learning and development for now because that's not our main focus, but no worries. Uh, we can say that uh, when you join the team, of course, like your team leader, your peers, um, we're going to do like training for your soft skill and also hard skill. Another side, the career progression is very, uh, you know, it's very easy in Zen. So you're going to learn a lot from the processes or the team experiences as well. Um, and in terms of the, um, you know, like a regular training that we do, we sometimes do some like Zen master class. And the ones who speak is anyone who is very good at that certain point. So let's say if you're a fresh grad and you are good at something and you want to share about it, you can also be like our uh, facilitator on that kind of training. So we are pretty much very flexible on that. Um, so yeah, I think that's the learning and development uh, activities that we actually do right now in Zen Rooms. Amazing. Yeah, we're really similar to Zen Rooms in that respect, um, which is kind of everyone's like good, very efficient answers. Everyone's really similar. Um, in addition to that, we do have employee-led seminars. And I think one big thing that people are worried about is they're like, I'm not a fintech person. How will I understand fintech? So um, people at our company who are very passionate about it will come and talk about investing and ESOPs and all these kinds of things that are happening in the industry. So it's very employee sourced. And then we also uh, have a tie up with a platform so people can take online courses um, they have a budgeted amount so they can do whatever they want to help expand their minds. Yeah. Grace, Chennai? Uh, for us, it's also unstructured, I, I would say. So, of course, uh, for the we have a sort of a one-month uh, onboarding program for all the new joiners, whether you're fresh or not fresh grad. So, just to get you familiarized with the environment and then continue with those on-the-job trainings. And, and, and again, we have pretty good 
knowledge sharing things like for example because we also have limited budgets for training right so we will send some people to attend certain um certification or trainings and after that that person will need to come back and and probably do a brown bag aligned session to share with the rest about what have been what have this person learned for example so we have those in place as well but i would say in general it's still unstructured um training yeah I think for CAPE, um, we have a hybrid, so of uh, both structured and unstructured. So the structured learning and the structured development is uh, included in your onboarding process. Um, Sing Tian, our CEO, uh, sometimes conducts those trainings himself uh, because he, like, he's, uh, you know, he's the one who knows the product the best. And so he will be the one actually on, on the ground uh, sort of training us on the different products. Um, and then on the other hand, uh, we have things like soft skills training. So um, I'm your in-house coach, actually. So um, I'm your in-house coach. I teach uh, on the Enneagram. I train you on Enneagram, uh, which is a personality type uh, testing thing. Um, and and if you have any sort of issues um, with work or, or you know, um, a picture just now mentioned imposter syndrome, um, we, we all sort of, I think, uh, experience it. So like, how do you like move out of that um, so, so we, we talk about those as well um, in the sense of like personal development as well as career development. So yeah, yes. So the short answer is yes. 